Shorty rolling up. Oh yeah, she smoking with a nigga. She pour it up and drink it with a nigga. Yeah, shorty pulling up. And yeah, she bought a couple friends. You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang. Yeah, shorty pulling up. Shorty rolling up. And yeah, she bought a couple friends. You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang. Yeah, shorty pulling up. She pulling up with baddies. She pull up when that caller, she knows who's her daddy. Shorty looking fire, she apply that pressure. <laughs> what is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, <clears throat> uh, today we are going to be working on the steering wheel for my car. So, for those of you that don't know, I finally got a new daily. So, it's winter time starting to sneak up on us pretty quickly. So, that means that the Beamer is going to be parked for the rest of the year, um, doing for maintenance. So, I'm going to be doing the, all the maintenance done. Um, most of my shit's up to date, but I want to do like gaskets and everything all over again. But I also want to work on mostly on cosmetics. So my car has a single turbo and all the upgrades and everything on it. Upgraded transmission from Joshua Gurata Works. So it has a 6 HP 28. But now I want to work on cosmetics. So I'm going to bring something new to the channel. Um, for those of you that know me and my boy Jermaine on our OG channel on suicide underscore E92. Um, you guys know that we were working on my carbon fiber trunk. So... Um, that ended up being a fail. Some of the resin and stuff that we used was not what we needed. Ended up yellowing and peeling and stuff like that. So I did a little bit more research and I found out the stuff that we're supposed to be using. So I've been practicing with it lately. Um, for those of you that have me on social media like Instagram or on the um, BMW pages on Facebook or even my TikTok, you guys see a bunch of my carbon fiber work. So um, I am still very, very busy. We still have turbo manifolds and everything we're working on um but to show you a few pieces this is also something i've been working on so this is um the front air scoop when you open up the hood i'm doing this piece in forged carbon so it's not complete yet the resin's still drying um i still gotta do sanding and a wet sanding and polish and then clear coat or clear coat and then polish um this is also another piece that i've been working on so this is going to be a e90 headlight air duct so i'm not a fan of what's already on the market um, so I'm going to be making this one is a full air scoop and the air is, this is about a three and a half inch hole. Um, but it's flat on top and bottom. Um, the reason is so when I do the mold, I can actually release it. So this is just the mold that we're making, still working on it. Um, still got to finish sanding and smoothing everything out, but this one is completed. Um, they are going to be made in forged carbon or regular woven two by two twelve carbon. So pretty excited for this part to come out. I'm the only thing I've been very, very busy. Um, for those of you that know also, I've been working with my boy, John. Um, we're trying to come out with a tubular budget manifold. So that's how this one's coming out. Get you some bottom clips. Still trying to finish it up, um, but this one's gonna be running a Pulsar 3582. Um, this one should make some good power. We're doing a three inch downpipe and instead of the um, two bolt design from OEM, we're gonna be doing a V band exit. So I think the two bolt creates like a interference with the sound and it gives you like the rasp. So we're just gonna go full tube. So that's how that one's coming out. I did get a spare hood. Um, this one's in pretty good condition. It's an OEM style, um, just like the factory. I did get a spare hood because I was gonna make a mold for it so that I can do like carbon fiber. Um, I was going to attempt to do my own carbon fiber hood, but um, if I'm going to go through all that trouble, I'm trying to get my hands on the new um, M4 style E90 hood so I can make that one in forged carbon. So I don't want to waste my time on the OEM one. So <clears throat> let me show you guys the car a little bit. Um, she's been stored for about two months now, so she is covered in dust from all the sanding and everything. But let me show you what she looks like and what we're going to be doing today. So, like I said, for cosmetics and everything, I am going to be working on making a custom carbon fiber hood with M4 style. We're going to be making custom carbon fiber fenders as well, M3 styles with the scoop. Um, I'm going to be doing forged carbon um, door handles, forged carbon mirror caps, forged carbon trunk. Everything's going to be forged carbon. I swear to God, this is going to be the nastiest E90 you'll ever see. And if I have the balls, the roof as well. So, the roof is going to be a little skeptical. Um, the plan on it is you would have to do a carbon fiber overlay on it. And then I also have to keep the sunroof and everything because I don't want to delete that. I like it. So the plan is um, overlay carbon fiber on this, multiple layers, and then grow the balls, take this off, and then put the carbon fiber one on. 
Now for interior, <clears throat> I already worked on it a little bit. So like I said, for those of you that follow me on TikTok or Instagram or stuff, um, you've seen some of my work. So I did the carbon fiber steering piece. If you guys want, I'll also put some clips in the videos. Yeah, I'll put the clips. Um, I have these that I made. It's very hard to capture carbon, forged carbon on camera. But hopefully you guys are able to see it. I also did the, the dash. With the button placed in. I made my own custom, um, what do you call it, shifter cover. So basically this is a stock E60, which is a black piece that you see around, the stock E60. And then I gutted the inside out so I can clear the, the shifter bezel. And then the center part, the silver part that you're seeing, this is um, an E60 shifter. So what I did was I just trimmed it up and then I glued it together and then laid carbon fiber over it. So it's hard to see. This was one of the first pieces that I ever did. So if you guys see that silver spot, silver spot right here is actually missing carbon inside there. What you're seeing is actually that silver piece. So I actually wanna redo this piece. Um, like I said, this was one of the first ones that I ever made. This was the second piece that I ever made. And then that was the third piece. And now I'm working on the engine scoop and everything. Um, I have new material and everything, so it's a lot easier. But yeah, that's how this stuff comes out. Very hard to capture on camera, especially during real bright days. But <clears throat> for the rest of the interior, um, I'm going to plan on doing this forged carbon. This is going to be in forged carbon. Um, this piece I'm also working on in forged carbon. The door trims, I'm going to do in forged carbon. Maybe the maybe that stuff. I'm not sure. I don't want to rice it out too much like that. But um, I also make the E90 gauge pods. So as you can see, there's no seams whatsoever. You can't even tell. Everything is plastic welded together and then bonded to smoothed out. I have my AFR. I'm still missing my boost gauge. I got lazy and never finished it. So I'll order that this winter. But the point of this video today is, sorry for the long intro. I just wanted to show you guys my car and um, shit that we're doing to it. But next is a steering wheel. So a lot of people have been commenting on my videos and everything, like who chewed up my video, um, oh, sorry, who chewed up my steering wheel and stuff like that. <laughs> but anyways, today we're gonna be taking care of it. So I wanna figure out how to take the steering wheel out. Um, I know I gotta unplug the battery, and that way the airbag doesn't blow in my face. So what we're gonna do is unplug the battery. Um, we'll set like um, a couple pillows or something underneath the latch so it doesn't lock on me, since it's all electronic. And then, um, We'll start taking all these trims off and then we'll figure out how to get the steering wheel off. So I'll probably hook up the GoPro for a time lapse for you guys and then we'll get this bad boy off. All right, guys, batteries unplugged. I got this thing taken out. So there's three screws that hold this bad boy in. So there's one at the bottom, one on the corner, and then one on the other corner up there. Um, the screws are located in the back of the steering wheel right here. One there and then another one right there. Um, I don't know what they are. I just used a allen set and is a number 764 whatever you want to call that shit so i got those out so now we're just gonna have to figure out how to take out the airbag i don't know how we'll figure it out all right you guys so in the time lapse you guys seen that we just pulled this bad boy off so what i didn't tell you guys is um i did tell you guys i unplugged the battery right but you got to leave the car off for at least a little over an hour just so like all the computers and everything they have little capacitors inside them that hold voltage so your airbag could still go off so make sure that you leave the battery unplugged for i'd say about an hour and a half safely and then you should be able to play with the airbags no problem without it inflating on you ice cream anyways so in order to get the airbag off, if you have a sport model like I do, um, you have two springs on here. So if you guys can see that little metal spring clip right there, you guys also have another one over here. If you guys have the base model, then you guys should just have a clip down here. So in the back of the steering wheel, it's kind of hard to see, but you have a little slice inside the leather. And what that is, is to keep it low key. Over here, you can see this one as well. Um, the sport models are gonna have them on the side like this. The base models are gonna have them down here hard to see but um basically what you got to do is get yourself a flathead screwdriver you stick it inside that hole pause 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to feel for the spring. You're going to feel it want to push back on you. What you're going to want to do is push it all the way, nice and hard. At the same time, you want to put a little bit of pressure on the airbag as well. That way you don't break the clips on the airbag. So in the back of the airbag, those two hooks is what actually gets clipped on. So what you're doing is you're pushing the spring past out the hook, and then this will be able to pop out, if that makes sense. So now what we got to do is also remove the pins off of the airbag. Now be very, 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 very careful with these because they don't just pop out like regular clips. They're also color coded, so you don't really have to worry about where they go. You can't really mess that up. But the clips are placed down this way on the airbags. And if you see this top black piece, this black piece is actually flush like that. And that's what locks it in. So you want to do is get a flathead screwdriver and stick it in right there. It's hard to record with one hand. Stick it in right there. And you're just going to want to pop this black piece up. Once it pops up, then you can wiggle these bad boys out no problem. So just make sure you guys do that step. This is how they should look like when they're popped up. And then you can fully remove it. Because if you see that little green tab right there, that actually locks it in. So make sure you guys do not skip that step if you guys don't want to possibly ruin the airbag and then have to figure out where to get one of these wiring harnesses. So now next step, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the cables off of the steering wheel so we don't break those when we get it with our impact gun. So we got one and then two. So these are removed. Uh, this goes to the paddles. So what we can do is actually just remove this one as well. I mean, I'm trying to do all this stuff one handed. So that's unplugged. Uh, we'll remove this one as well. And these just pop straight out. I can't do it with one hand for this one. There we go. All right. So these are just your steering wheel functions. We can put those to the side with the other parts. So now our steering wheel is ready to come out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a, our impact gun with a socket and we're gonna drive that bad boy out. So I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse for that one. All right guys, so I know I said I was gonna put you on time lapse. I lied, fuck it. We're gonna do a regular video. There's no point in taking one bolt out on a time lapse. So you're gonna get your socket set and your impact gun. I like the Milwaukee's, they're super strong. So now let's figure out what size they are. It's a number 16 bolt for the steering wheel. So get your 60 millimeter socket, get your impact gun, put that shit on mode, break everything, and let's see if we can get it out. Milwaukee never let me down. That was on setting one. So it's actually not that tight in there, and it doesn't look like it has any Loctite. So the only thing you got to do is when you go to put the steering wheel back on, um, just find out the torque specs for this. For me, I'm just going to ugga dugga the shit out of it. Not gonna lie to you. All right, let me clean this out a little bit so I can show you guys inside what you're looking for. All right, guys, back to the steering wheel. So we got that bolt out. Like I said, it's a number 16 socket. Doesn't have any Loctite or anything on it. It's just torqued. So when you take this out, I know a lot of people's fear is putting it back on and losing your alignment. But if you look inside the steering wheel, I hope it focuses there we go it actually has alignment pins on there and you can only put the steering wheel on one way because at the bottom is not spliced like the teeth know what i mean it's sort of like a notch so technically the steering wheel can only go on one way so you really can't mess it up so when you put the steering wheel on do not force it on if it does not go on because you will mess up the teeth so just keep that in mind be very very careful have a good look at it it has like three notches, three teeth at the bottom that are all in line. So as long as you just put that on together, the same way you took it out, you should be good. All right, guys, back to the GoPro. Um, quality difference might be a little weird for you guys because I'm switching from iPhone camera to GoPro camera, but it's the same shit. So everything's off. Um, all the wires, the airbags, the bolt to hold it down, all that's off. So 
Hopefully I don't need a puller. I haven't tried it yet. I'm gonna do it with you guys. So let's just see if the steering wheel wiggles out. If it does, then perfect. If not, we're gonna have to go get a fucking steering wheel puller. So, oh, beautiful. She just popped right out. So she doesn't wanna come all the way out. So let's figure out what's wrong with that. Got you. All right, back to the iPhone camera so I can show you. All right guys, so when I tried to pull the steering wheel out, it didn't want to come out because this wire was getting caught. So that means that this black piece in the back, I'm not sure what that is just yet, but it doesn't come off with the steering wheel. So this cable is pinched inside here on a clip and is also clipped on into your paddle clip back there. So what you want to do is just remove that, take that out of there, take that out of there, and then the steering wheel should be able to pop out. Yes, sir. Alrighty guys, so we got the steering wheel off. Finally. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought. This doesn't weigh shit. Probably like a pound or two. Alrighty you guys, so steering wheel is all cleaned up now. She's even more faded than what she used to be, but that's because of the dirt and everything. So we also gave this a, a, like a, a light sanding on it too, because the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna lay epoxy over the leather. I don't wanna peel that off and have to cover everything up with um like body filler or something just to get that bulkiness again. So as long as your leather is not separating like it is up here and you don't have any play in it, you should be good. So mine is still pretty good, except for this spot right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay epoxy in there and then make sure it gets inside there. And then when it gets hard, I'll sand, I'll sand like these lip parts and everything so it's smooth with the steering wheel. So we got the steering wheel cleaned up. She's been out in the sun for about two hours. So she's pretty dry. Um, so now I just have her here on my welding bench. I made this plate here real quick, just to space it up. So I have some room to work. I also have my hot glue gun here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue that plate to my welding bench just so it's sturdy and I have something to hold it. I'm gonna turn that off. So now we're just gonna let that glue dry so it holds the steering wheel in place. So, <clears throat> so if you guys wanna recap, um, we got the steering wheel unbolted, um, paddles and everything are off, all the wiring and all that shit is out steering wheel was cleaned up really good it was filled with a bunch of grease and dirt and everything from all the years like i said i am a mechanic so i do drive my car dirty sometimes it was a daily driver so she was pretty dirty obviously you can see it has some wear and tear after the years so <clears throat> what we're gonna do right now is since it's all nice and clean um, i'm just gonna go over it with some acetone real quick just to make sure it's all dry and i'm gonna mix up a light layer of epoxy and i'm gonna put some black dye into it so we're gonna be adding some of this into it for the epoxy that we're gonna be using. This is what I've been using for my carbon fiber. So if you guys wanna screenshot that real quick and then order yourself some. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna mix up a little bit of that and we're just gonna do a light layer of epoxy over it. Um, the epoxy is just to hold everything intact, nice and hard. And then at the bottom, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this flat. And then with the epoxy putty, we're gonna put like um, some edges here to blend it in so I have the flat bottom. And then here inside the hand steering wheel, um, we're gonna sand a little bit of this away so we have that nice, um, hard to say. But if you guys seen the other carbon fiber steering wheels that they make for the E90, you'll know what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you on time lapse, um, put a little bit of music on so you guys can just enjoy the process. Um, if I feel like there's something important for you guys to know, I'll stop the music and I'll talk. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started on this carbon fiber. All right, you guys. So hopefully the GoPro is doing justice. You guys are on the GoPro right now. So the epoxy on the steering wheel is hardened. Um, it started fucking storming out here, so I had to bring it in. It does have a little bit of moisture in there from the humidity. 
So what we're gonna do is just gonna wipe this off real quick. We'll get a rag, we'll wipe it all off. Make sure it's all nice and dry. Um, and then what we're also gonna do is I'm gonna grab my grinder and I'm just gonna start cleaning up. If you guys remember this leather was sticking out, so now it's nice and hard. Hopefully you guys can hear that. So epoxy by itself on the leather is still pretty soft. Like you can still, it's still squishy. So epoxy doesn't get hard until you add um, reinforcement like fiberglass or carbon fiber or Kevlar or something like that. So right now is you know just hard enough for us to work with. But once until we start adding the carbon fiber and everything, it won't be as hard. So put you guys on time lapse. We're gonna get that cleaned up. I'm also gonna use my uh, Milwaukee die grinder with a sanding cone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing a little bit of grinding here so I can have that nice transition like they do on the carbon fiber ones. I'm also gonna sand a flat spot down here and then use some Bondo so I can blend it in and get my nice flat spot and my curve. I'm also gonna try to add a little hump here so I can get that sporty feel on the steering wheel. So all that's gonna be on time lapse. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so while we're waiting for the Bondo to dry, um, 
I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been commenting on my other videos that you guys want more talking and explaining, but you know, it's just boring talking the whole time. So anyways, we have the grooves and everything sanded down for our thumb sprint. It feels pretty comfy. Um, next, what we did, since the whole steering wheel is epoxied, uh, I also had, did have to remove the piece of leather here just because it was flapping. No biggie though. But um, yeah, since the whole thing is epoxied, now I can give it little fine scratches on there for the Bondo to actually adhere to. So what we did was I want the flat bottom on here with the little taper going onto the sides. So at first I tried to put the Bondo on there, but it was just too liquidy or whatever you want to call it. So it just wanted to fall down. So what I did was I put this um, sign board down here with some hot glue. Again, I used my hot glue gun. So I just glued it to the bottom and I put these two little barriers so I can get my wall. So once I get this filled up with Bondo, which as you can see, we still have, um, we still gotta pour some inside here. But I'm just doing it slowly, I don't wanna rush it. Um, I don't want the inside of the Bondo to not cure. So I'd rather do it slowly and build it up. And then once this is fully built up, we're also gonna put little, um, little humps here. So you can have like a nice feel here, or you can have the feel here, or up here, whatever you wanna, you know, basically feel the steering wheel. But um, yeah, I think she's coming out pretty great. Um, I hope you guys are liking the video. If you guys do, please hit me with like and subscribe. Um, I will be doing a lot more carbon fiber stuff. I'm starting to get better with this. But um, anyways, yeah, that's what's going on right now. I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse. I'm gonna finish filling this bad boy up, and we'll get to sanding pretty soon. Oh yeah, she smoking with a nigga. She pour it up and drink it with a nigga. Yeah, shawty pulling up. Hey, yeah, she bought a couple friends. You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang. Yeah, shawty pulling up. Shawty rolling up. Hey, yeah, she bought a couple friends. You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang. Yeah, shawty pulling up. No way, no asking me twice. You roll that shit up. Back, I'm taking shots and no, I'm not no drinker She throw that body on me and now I'm flowing like a swimmer Going deep, I'm showing three, she call me Gemma She get lobster for the dinner uh, Your body my dessert, no, I'm not finished uh, Keep it going and you fucking with a winner uh, Pack you that man, I know you fucking with a nigga uh, Shorty rolling up, oh yeah, she smoking with a nigga She pour it up and drink it with a nigga, yeah, shorty pulling up Hey, yeah, she bought a couple friends You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang Yeah, shawty pulling up Shawty rolling up Hey, yeah, she bought a couple friends You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang Yeah, shawty pulling up Oh, yeah, she smoking with a nigga She pour it up and drinking with a nigga Yeah, shawty pulling up Hey, yeah, she bought a couple friends. You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang. Yeah, shawty pulling up. Shawty rolling up. Hey, yeah, she bought a couple friends. You know I'm in here mobbing with the gang. Yeah, shawty pulling up.
I had to lose it all to get it back. I swear that I was losing it. I gave my love and trust in those that only kept the fuse. Alrighty, guys. So the GoPro died on me last night. Um, but luckily I didn't get too much done. Um, all we did was we just finished building up the bondo and everything on our edges. Um, we finished building up on our flat bottom. Um, all the sanding and everything is done, so she's smooth. So hopefully you guys can see what's going on. We got our flat bottom. We have our hand grips down here. We have our hand grips up here with our thumb supports, our guides. Um, top is smoothed out. You guys remember the leather was peeling so she's all cleaned up i washed her up i let her dry in the sun for a couple hours because the foam will suck up the moisture so <clears throat> basically what we're going to do right now is um we're going to start taping off the center because we don't want to get any epoxy or any carbon fiber on the center the center we're going to leave with the leather and then at the end what we'll probably do is we'll wrap it up in like some alcantara or something but um the goal is right now is just to get the outside leather and everything covered in forged carbon so what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna put you guys back on time lapse. We're gonna tape the center up with some blue tape, and then we'll probably put like a wax layer on the edges just to make sure it doesn't stick. And then um, we'll start mixing up some epoxy with some black tint, and we'll throw a layer over everything. We'll wait till it gets tacky, and then we'll start putting our carbon fiber plate, and I'll get the back and bag ready. So let's go ahead with the tape job. Alrighty guys, so we got the steering wheel all taped off, ready to go. So we're gonna get ourselves our mixing cup, and we're gonna use our epoxy of choice. Um, this is all I have. It's really expensive shit to be doing what I'm doing, but oh well. So we're just gonna do a light layer of epoxy over the steering wheel. Um, that way it can get all tacky and everything, and we can put a carbon fiber. So all I'm gonna do is just one pump. So I'm gonna use one pump of epoxy. And this is a three to one system, I believe. Somewhere here. So anyways, it just basically comes with the pump. So you do one pump of epoxy resin, the 105, and you do one pump to the 207. So the pumps already do everything for you. They do all the calculations and stuff for you. So that's good about that. Invest in the extra 40 bucks and just get the self the pumps. Um, we're also gonna be using our, um, our black dye for our resin. So I'm just gonna put like a drop or two of that or however this stuff wants to come out. Usually it's really thick. So I just put about that much. You don't need much. And then I use my drill and then I got these mixers, these epoxy mixers on Amazon. They were cheap, they come in like a pack of like 15 for like only like 10 bucks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it up really good. That's what the epoxy looks like just that little bit of dye that stuff is like super potent so this stuff's pretty cheap too they come in all different colors whatever you guys want and since we're doing black carbon fiber if i accidentally do sand through the carbon at least i'll have a black epoxy backing so that should help a little bit but um next we're gonna get ourselves a chip brush so i got a pack of 50 of these on amazon also for like only a couple bucks they're cheap um, a lot of people ask you ask me um, what I how do I reuse my brushes? I don't they're cheap enough. You just use it throw it away and open up a new one So anyways, let's get our steering wheel in. Let's clear all this stuff off the working table Let me turn the music off so I don't get copyrighted All right, so we have our epoxy we got our steering wheel what we're gonna do is the back of it first that way The reason I put the hole is so I can put the steering wheel back on my stand while it dries. So we got the steering wheel. Clean it all off real quick before the 
brush uses epoxy. So now we're ready to start laying some epoxy down. So you don't need much. You want to go real lightly. All you need is a light coat on there so it can get tacky. So just go over the whole steering wheel. Make sure you get all the nooks and crannies, whatever, whatever you want to call that shit. So I'm going to put you guys back on a time lapse. But this is basically all you're going to do. Just brush it on the leather, on the Bondo and all that stuff. And give it a couple hours for it to get tacky. Epoxy is all on there, front and back. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it about three hours for it to get tacky. You do not want it to get fully dry. If it's fully dry, then I highly suggest sanding everything down again and getting that thin layer again and then start all over. So what you're looking for is it for it to be tacky, but not when basically when you tap your finger on it, you should get like a tacky feel without the epoxy getting on your finger. So that's when it's perfect. So when what you want to do is start laying your carbon fiber and everything on it. And um, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna put it in a vacuum infusion. So that way it holds everything nice and tight so I can have the grooves and all that stuff. So I'm gonna start getting that stuff prepped and we're gonna come back to this in about three hours. All right, you guys. So here's the vacuum pump that we're gonna be using. Amazon vacuum pump. Someone wants to be in the YouTube videos. So <clears throat> that's the vacuum pump. And then here is our peel ply. Um, this one's just a small little piece. This is gonna be the breather for our vacuum line. For vacuum line, I'm using a five millimeter silicone hose. Um, it's really all I have. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this around it. And what this is gonna do is gonna prevent the vacuum bag from actually getting sucked in and not allowing to pull vacuum. So this is a breather cloth. You just wrap this up around it like that and then you let it just do its job. You wanna put this as close as possible to the vacuum, so I'll probably put this here like in the middle or something. All right, next we're gonna have our vacuum bag filled. So this is just a regular vacuum bag. Yeah, daddy. So it already has um, gum tape inside of it. Daddy. Daddy, can you wait? And this daddy a car? Yeah. Daddy yeah. So anyways, um, the vacuum Daddy bag is already cut to length. Here, you want to talk to YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. Daddy okay. car. Daddy's car. <laughs> Done? Yeah. All right. Now we can finish up here. Daddy so, car. like I said before, okay, okay, okay. We had the vacuum bag already pre-cut for the steering wheel. Next we have um, our gum tape, so this is um, tacky tape, gum tape, um, mold bagging tape, anything. It's called a whole bunch of different things. This one's all out of form, you know, good old Amazon. They take care of this shit very, very well. So this one's a pain in the ass to use, but it works. We shall see if it still has its tackiness. If the bag holds vacuum, then we're good to go. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our steering wheel, we're gonna put it inside of our five gallon bucket, and we're gonna start basically flaking carbon all over it. And then I'm gonna grab my peel ply, put it over the steering wheel nice and gently so I don't distort the carbon. And then I'm gonna try to put it inside the grooves and stuff like that, and make some slits so I can go around the steering wheel, you know, etc. So I'll put you guys on time lapse for that, and I'll try to slow down the time lapse a little bit so you guys can actually enjoy the carbon. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. the GoPro is doing justice but steering wheel is covered in carbon I gotta get a bigger bucket for shit like this because I'm basically wasting carbon on the floor it's not much and carbon's so cheap but still I don't like wasting shit that's what it looks like so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our peel ply over and then we'll set it up inside the vacuum bag and we'll start pulling vacuum
Alrighty guys, so switched over to the iPhone to get you guys a better quality. But vacuum is in process. Everything is nice and tight. That's the vacuum pump, Autogen. Got it off Amazon. It works pretty good. I have no complaints on it. First one I ever had, but yeah, so now we're just gonna let this sit over here for 24 hours and then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see how she looks. So it's the next day now. Uh, it's been 24 hours since we put this in the vacuum bag. So it's time to open her up. using um, mold release or mold bagging um, the epoxy doesn't really stick to the bag so it has like its own self-release agent which is pretty cool it makes things a lot easier so as you guys can see no stress at all you just release the steering wheel from the bag You will have very sharp edges on here, so be careful. <clears throat> but that's what she looks like on the first layer of carbon. So I can see, you know, there's still spots missing and stuff that need more carbon. Um, but that's not the end of the world because the first process of getting forged carbon on there is just to get a base layer. So you have your blacking epoxy in the back and then you put your carbon fiber on top and you get the vacuum fusion. You're still gonna have spots that's missing, you always will. The point is right now is we have a starting base. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna sand the steering wheel smooth, get rid of the sharp edges and the pieces that's sticking up. We're gonna lay epoxy all over again. And we're gonna do the same process all over. So we're gonna put flakes and everything on it. Um, you still gotta do the same thing process that we did before, put your epoxy, this time we're not gonna do any black tint, we're gonna use clear epoxy. Um, we don't want the black tint getting rid of our carbon now that we already have here as our base layer. So we're gonna sand it smooth, put a layer of clear epoxy, put carbon fiber flakes and everything after you let your epoxy get tacky. Put another layer of carbon and then back into the vacuum infusion. What you're gonna do is you're gonna keep building that up until you have no more spots that are um, not covered with carbon. And then you can start sanding smooth and then build up your epoxy so you can get your smooth steering wheel. But that's what she looks like so far. smooth for the next layer.
finished putting the layer of epoxy on. Like I said, it's just epoxy, no tint. You want that clarity so the carbon fiber actually pops out. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry for about three hours so it can get nice and tacky and then we'll come back and we'll put the carbon fiber flakes. Um, I am gonna reuse the plastic bag that we just took off. All I did was just put new gum tape on there, get it ready. Um, but yeah, we'll come back when this is ready and we'll start putting carbon fiber flakes over it. All right, you guys, so she's been curing for about three hours now. She's tacky, that's what you're looking for. Um, she's leaving a little bit of resin on me, but nothing crazy. So now what we're gonna do is just flake some more carbon on there and we're gonna put it back in the vacuum bag and let that cure for another 24 hours and we'll see where that puts us. So back on time lapse, let's get some carbon on here. vacuum bag I just reused the old bag nothing wrong with that um, I don't have too much material to keep playing with I'm still waiting for my material to order um, to be delivered so that's why I reused the bag but anyways she's under vacuum everything is nice and tight this is the second layer of carbon fiber on here so I'm hoping that this covers up most of the areas that were missed um, if not then what we're gonna do is just sand it down smooth and then we'll just touch up the little spots that are missed with um, carbon instead of doing this whole process all over again but um, two layers of forged carbon is good um, like I said before you'll get your base layer you'll cover up as much as you can and then you're always gonna have spots that are missing because the nature of you know forged carbon you can't get it every every spot so that's the point of going to, um, with a round two with forged carbon so um, Again, we're gonna let this cure for 24 hours. She's under vacuum. The vacuum is pretty fucking strong. It sucked all the tape in and the leather's being pulled down. But let me see if I can get you guys a back view. It's all completely under vacuum. So I'll see you guys in 24 hours. Alrighty you guys, 24 hours later, let's see what she looks like. So grab yourself your scissors. This time this bag is garbage, so it's not no longer useful. This gum tape is strong as shit. I'm gonna start fixing my coolant leaks with this stuff.
guys so we're just going to give it an overview make sure all of our spots did get covered in carbon make sure nothing was missed So far everything was good. The only spot that I want to put a little bit more carbon in is this corner right here. And it's not because it's missing any, it's just <clears throat> I want to build up that sharper edge a little bit with carbon. So when I go to sand, I have some more um, working room. Well, everything looks pretty good though. Um, I don't really have any sharp edges. I guess using the vacuum bag without the fuel ply works even better actually, because now I don't have no sharp edges. Nothing really sharp about the steering wheel, so that's pretty cool. So basically all I'm doing right now is just compressing all of the loose carbon. Because what we're going to do right now is put a, a light layer of epoxy over everything and start building the epoxy up so we can get our, our nice shiny steering wheel. So let's mix up some more epoxy. Let's keep it going. so epoxy is all over the carbon fiber now so my garage is ac cooled so it's pretty cold in here so the epoxy is gonna have a hard time you know getting its clearness and i'm um, seeping through the, the the carbon that is not wet so what i'm doing basically is just grabbing a butane torch or map map gas propane whatever you can get and i'm basically just applying some heat on here you can even use a heat gun all I'm doing is applying some heat, that way um, the resin starts to clear up and I can see what needs to be wet and what's dry and stuff like that. And it also helps the resin um, seep through the carbon for like whatever spots that are dry and doesn't have you know, any resin underneath. So you can also see um, like little pieces of hair from the brush, like this one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out so it doesn't mess up our carbon. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. Oh well, there's a fucking hair there, believe me. Anyways, so the epoxy is all on there now. Um, steering wheel is basically soaked, so it's perfect. So the, the point of that is now you're gonna start getting your smoothness. You're still gonna have rough areas that need more epoxy. This is a long-term thing, so it's gonna take a while. So basically you just gotta epoxy, let it dry, put more epoxy, do not sand, put more epoxy, let it dry, build up that epoxy. I would do probably like four, four to five layers of epoxy. It's a real thin coat, so don't think that you're adding so much fucking weight. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, you're adding weight, you're adding weight. Bro, it's a fucking interior piece, it's a steering wheel, relax. But anyway, you wanna build the, the layers up to about like four to five layers, depending on the thickness of your epoxy. If yours is more like water, then you have to build up a couple more. Um, but if it's like a nice thick base, you can also get like additives to make your epoxy a little bit thicker um, while keeping the clarity. But anyways, um, I'm gonna do this about four or five times. I won't record all of them. I'm just I don't, I don't want it to get boring. So what I'll do is next time we we'll see you guys, uh, I'll have this built up with epoxy, and all we have to do is just sand. So let this bad boy dry.
importa, yo le doy la mano y el que no le guste, pues que arranque y se mueve para el carajo, no hay truco. La vida es solo una, yeah, la vida es solo una, por eso es que yo canto, la vida es solo una, yeah. Alrighty guys, so we finished sanding with it. It's not completely smooth obviously because you know this is a process that you gotta do. So it's smooth enough. So as you can see there's still high spots and low spots. Um, I over sanded a little bit here so we're gonna have to put a little bit more carbon and some resin on there. Um, we're gonna fill these corners up as well. This one needs to be filled up a little. Here's the other side of the steering wheel. It's pretty smooth on this side because this is the top face where we kept applying resin so what we were doing is just applying resin to the top and then just waiting for it to saturate to the back so what we're going to do is um, we're going to flip the steering wheel over towards the back let's do that now so over here what we're going to do is we're going to put our epoxy we're going to put a light layer just to build up the the, the low spots um, we're not going to soak it because when we do the other side resin is going to drip down so it's going to build on itself so what we're going to do is put a light coat back here. We're going to put a little bit of carbon on the corners that we're going to build up again. Um, and then flip it to the other side and then just apply epoxy. We're not adding carbon to the other side. So we're going to go back on time lapse and then yeah, let's get it. All right, you guys. So that's that layer of epoxy, it's all cured. And the steering wheel is starting to look really good. I know at first it was looking a little rough and it still is, believe me. It's really hard to capture this forged carbon on camera, but trust me, she's starting to look good. The steering wheel is starting to feel real smooth as well. She's nice and strong, but we still gotta do more sanding and more epoxy and all that, of course. But unfortunately, this video is getting extremely long now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a two-part video. So please give me the like, thumbs up, um, subscribe, and keep a look out for that second video. That second video will be coming out pretty soon. So <clears throat> I appreciate you guys for sticking around. Um, hopefully I taught you guys a little bit. And hopefully you guys start doing your own projects. If you guys do, if you guys have Instagram, if not, follow me, Frenchie underscore fab. And if you guys do try to create your own carbon fiber steering wheel, tag me, dude. Tag me. Use hashtag Frenchie fab. But um, I'm going to work on part two. I'll upload this one since it's pretty long. But I'll see you guys on the next one.